The first African Elephant Summit came to a close Thursday in Zimbabwe. Harare, some of its neighbors in southern Africa and two large consumer markets of ivory gathered in a bid to develop a new strategy. The participants cited deadly conflicts between humans and animals and called for the lifting of the 1989 CITES ban on ivory trade. When you look at um, how CITES is uh, at the moment, um, the very people that bear the biggest brand of living with the wildlife are not on, at the table. Um, it's, it's amazing that even governments uh, are struggling to be at the table because unfortunately um, it's particularly Western NGOs that are dictating um, where CITES should, should head. So it's a, it's a real issue. These communities say they are living space with wildlife sometimes, with dangerous wildlife such as lions, elephants, um, and that sometimes they contribute actively to the conservation of these animals. So if there are decisions to be made about the future of these elephants, about the trade, then it's just important that community voice is heard and communities actively participate in this process. The impact of the ban on ivory trade on state finances and management of elephant herds were the other pressing issues. Southern African countries are home to approximately 293,000 or 70% of the continent's elephant population. About 70% of our elephants share boundaries with other countries, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Botswana. Um, so yes, our elephants don't have passports and they don't do COVID tests. They walk forwards and backwards. So, so that means that, that we, we cannot manage elephants in isolation from, from the rest of Africa. Countries with large elephant herds insist they are ill-equipped to protect them and deal with poachers without the money from ivory cells. So far, anti-ivory trade NGOs warned an opening of the ivory market would decimate herds which need extensions in certain regions.